Hello, in this video we will discuss about the function of norepinephrine and epinephrine. That is the part of the sympathetic stimulation. So the sympathetic nervous system. It means the fight and flight response will produce the norepinephrine and epinephrine through our nervous system as well as on the other hand the adrenal gland. So let's begin to understand from norepinephrine first. So basically when we will understand the norepinephrine, so the epinephrine will convert, uh, covered in this topic. So first of all here is the norepinephrine, which that is a chemical formula is look like this, which that contain three hydroxyl group. So here you can see this is the low and normal and high level of the norepinephrine and epinephrine which that is when the low level normal mean the normal it will not uh, any complication while the a low level will cause depression poor memory lack of energy and concentration and motivation on less active uh, and obesity as well as other uh, inactivity and there are many complications while on the other hand the in uh, when high this epinephrine and norepinephrine will lead to increased blood pressure heart rate and uh, causes the hyperactivity and anxiety and stress irritability and insomnia and tachycardia so let's begin to understand from brain so here i am drawing the brain which that's contain a higher brain cortex after the stimulation for fear as well as the alertness and during uh, the classroom when you are learning the subject, learning the lesson, so the sympathetic nervous system will be activated for more alertness. So in this way the releasing mechanism, so the stimulus will stimulate the higher brain cortex will lead to give the signal to the hypothalamus of the brain. And of the, here is the hypothalamus and its contained pituitary gland. And hypothalamus which that stimulate the pituitary gland, adenohypophysis, uh, due to the releasing of the cortico corticotropic releasing factor. And in this way the corticotropic releasing factor will stimulate the pituitary gland cell which that will stimulate the adenocorticotropic hormone in the blood circulatory system. And in this way the constriction will be increased the adenocorticotropic releasing hormone HCTH. And in this way, it will target to the adrenal gland. So remember, and also the sympathetic nerves, which that is also used for the stimulation from the brain to the adrenal gland for releasing of the more uh, corticosteroids. And there are a lot of things. So it's contained medulla and cortex. Cortex con uh, contain different hormones and steroid, while the medulla contain different. So here the red color showing the ACTH will bind with the different region for example the medulla and the cortex. When bind with the medulla and cortex will release the different type of hormone let's begin to understand here. So this is the cortex containing cortisol in the form of human and corticosterone in the form of mice and glucocorticoids which that is produced from the uh, cortex of the adrenal gland while the uh, uh, medulla which that is produced the epinephrine and norepinephrine and catecholamines this all will lead to uh, basically use for the norepinephrine also called the adrenaline and substance that is released the predominantly by sympathetic fibers lead to increase the force of skeletal muscle contraction and contraction of heart. So that is why it is the norepinephrine function for the sympathetic nervous system for increase the energy and increase the output of the heart and while the contraction of the blood vessel will be increased and so it means the higher blood pressure. And during the higher blood pressure, the pupil will be more delayed for absorption of light, for accommodation of light. So in this way, the uh, pupil will be delayed in the eyes and there are a lot of the physiological, physiological changes. For example, the destruction of the uh, body and destroy the body basically for producing more energy. So it means the catabolism will be enhanced while the anabolism will be 
decrease. So here is the alpha 1 receptor will also lead to bind with the epinephrine and use for the contraction of the smooth muscle layers of the blood circulatory system. So the vascular smooth muscle contraction. While on the other hand, the here is the beta 1 receptor. This was the alpha 1 receptor, but here is the beta 1 receptor. When bound with the epinephrine, will lead to increase the renin. And renin is important for the control blood pressure through a sodium and potassium, potassium balance. So this is a, basically you can understand this is, this is. While on the other hand the epinephrine will target the smooth muscle cells of the digestive tract as well as the cardiac cells and the contractility will be increased through alpha 1 receptor due to the smooth muscle contraction also lead to contractility of the heart walls for more output of the heart. So here is the epinephrine which that will target to the digestive tract. After the digestive tract con targeting the smooth muscle contraction and sphincter muscle contraction will lead to antiperistalsis movement and antiperistaltic movement will lead to amitic reflex because the uh, digestion, the rest and digest will be inhibited. So the parasympathetic nervous system will be inhibited while the sympathetic nervous system will be stimulated, will be e e anti-peristaltic movement. So remember, the parasympathetic nervous system will be inhibited. So while here is the different type of cells which that bind with a different receptor with the contain epinephrine and norepinephrine uh, absorption. So in this way here is you can see this is the norepinephrine and this is the basically bind. After the binding the norepinephrine will lead to increase the ATP production and on the other hand here is the muscle cell and adipocytes and liver. So in this way the generally the cell which produce more ATP and gluconeogenesis and contraction of the uh, muscles, myocytes and lipolysis and alertness, glycolysis and glycogenolysis will be occur. So the glycogenolysis will lead to hyperglycemia and increase the blood glucose level. But it's normally after this the complete sympathetic nervous system inhibition will lead to again balance the glucose level iso, uh, um, uh, isoglycemic. So here the adipocyte and liver cell and muscle cell collectively we will discuss with that differently. So first of all we should need to understand the muscle cell. So this is the muscle cell which does contain plasma membrane. This plasma membrane generally we are understanding the, for example the norepinephrine or epinephrine will be bind. So the beta adrenergic receptor which that is also released from the beta adrenergic nerves. And after this the adrenergic nerves which that stimulate. So the intracellular, intracellular trimeric protein is known as the G couple protein. And in this way here is the alpha, beta and gamma. So the alpha is inactive will be activated due to the GTP. Convert into the GTP to GTP alpha. Will bind with the adenylate cyclase enzyme. After the binding with the adenylate cyclase enzyme. So the ATP will convert into the cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is the second messenger. Which, which that will be activate the protein kinase A. After the protein kinase A will stimulate the human sensitive lipase by the using of ATP and in this way the human sensitive lipase will be sensed and triacylglycerol are present for example in the adipose tissue or muscle cells and with the respect of the perilipin by the using of ATP will release the free fatty acid so the uh, lipolysis will be occur and glycerol formation and in this way this mechanism is so different and in this way we will just understand about the production of heat during the cold weather. So the cold weather it is the sympathetic nervous system stimulation will, stimulation will lead to increase the heat. While here the contraction of the muscle the phospholipase C which that will trigger through a beta and gamma subunit of the uh, G couple protein which that will be stimulate GPCR or basically the dimeric subunit of protein will lead to increase the IP2 conversion into the IP3. 
so the diacyl glycerol will be uh, separate while the ip3 which that is used for the sens sensation of the endoplasmic reticulum to efflux of the calcium ion it means it means the calcium will be increased will lead to more contraction of the muscle so here is the mitochondria which that is function for the production of more heat through a fat so here is the free fatty acid will convert into the acyl coa so the acyl coa is bind with the acyl uh, fatty acid to produce the acyl coa will convert in the outer mitochondria membrane contain carnitine this carnitine will be bind will uh, produce the acyl carnitine it will be uh, 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 it will be able to move inner mitochondrial membrane so that is the carnitine sh shuttle mechanism will be occur and here is the transferase enzyme used for the transformation of the acyl carnitine from outer mitochondrial membrane to the inner mitochondrial membrane without this it will be impossible while here is the translocase enzyme which that is used for the translocation translocation so this is the translocation not transferase but the transferase enzyme used for the acyl coa separation with the binding with the coa and in this the carnitine will be separate and this carnitine will be, will be back into the outer mitochondrial membrane through a uh, trans a carnitine acyl carnitine uh, carnitine translocase enzyme and in this way the binding and uh, amazing thing is that the acyl coa which that will be used for the beta oxidation to produce more acyl coa this acyl co acetyl coa sorry will go into the krebs cycle to produce the nadph and uh, nadh and fadh2 which that is used for the more atp and the electron transport chain which that is used for the ucp instead of the atpas ucp1 will increase the heat when the influx of the proton so remember while here is the epinephrine this epinephrine will be bind with the here is the adipocyte and liver cell so the liver cell remember for the glycogenolysis and muscle cells not adipocytes you should need but adipocyte is a minor but here is the epinephrine will bind with the epinephrine receptor with the trimeric subunit in intracellularly alpha unit will be activated again that same mechanism and the activating the g protein subunit and in this way the activation the activated adenylate cyclase enzyme used to produce again cyclic amp so this cyclic amp is the second messenger which that will be activate the inactive protein kinase a and this protein kinase a will be active and protein kinase a will be active glycogen synthase enzyme to inactive the glycogen synthase enzyme so the 20 cyclic amp are made for each protein kinase a activates so the 20 uh, cyclic amp is required for the one pka activation so here is the active glycogen synthase will be inactivate through a protein kinase activation will lead to inhibit the activation of the glycogen synthase enzyme so in this way the glycogenesis will be inhibit while the glycogenolysis will be activate it means the more production of glucose will lead to hyperglycemia in the blood circulatory system so here is you can see the inactive phosphorylase kinase and a which that will be activate the a activated protein kinase phospho sorry phosphorylase kinase a and in this way the activation will lead to inactive glycogen phosphorylase will be activate so the active glycogen phosphorylation will be occur and a the basically the agp will be uh, active glycogen phosphorylase will will basically glycogen will be degradation and the glucose one phosphate will be formed and this glucose one phosphate will convert into the glucose easily and in this way the glucose will be moved through glute transporter to the blood circulatory system will lead to increase the hyperglycemia so the more glucose will be occur so this was the function of norepinephrine and epinephrine or adrenaline and noradrenaline so thanks for watching please make sure to subscribe like and share bye next video we will see